Wow. Well. Get a piece. Get a piece. Yeah. Let's go. Let's talk in English, João. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. okay. Thanks for it's, having uh, me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I was just uh, making you some time and, and so we can start. But um, as we... Um, As we always say, this is, uh, this is to be a relaxed conversation and um, just let it flow, okay? I think um, we are starting. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, making here a small presentation of João uh, and then uh, I'm reading just a few lines so, so I can, uh, I don't want to forget anything. And then we start our talk. Um, with some things, okay? Easy. So, uh, here we go. Um, thanks again, João, for being here and to have this talk because uh, this is something um, I had planned a long time ago and this context just um, uh, promotes the, promoted this, this to come up. So, the idea is to share some, uh, some talks, with some extraordinary persons that crossed my life and that I, I think that I gained so much with you that, um, that I would like to, to share this a bit with, with who is on the other side, okay? okay. You give a lot of good a bit, that's why you, you surround yourself by all these cool people, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you, thank you. So, let's... Um, yeah. João, João Aka Massas, and uh, we'll, we'll understand why Massas, because maybe it's the, some, some non-Portuguese don't know what it means. So, João, a uh, son of Portuguese parents, was born in June 1st, 1977, in New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, he began his surfing adventure by bodyboard at age 7 in Praia Grande, Sintra. Uh, back then, he founded his lifetime passion in Atlantic Ocean roughness. This passion in Vettable became a career connected to the sea. He was the first Portuguese and European professional surfer to qualify to pedal in the WSL Big Wave Tour, which he finished in the top five back in 2012-2013 season. He graduated also in economy in the year 2000 and in the same year he founded Surf Academy um, that you can find in the website surfacademyjoamacedo.com I think it's like that, right John? Yep, that's it. In Praia Grande uh, and also in Carcavelos and now not only now in Praia Grande, right? I think Correct. so. Correct, yeah, we've got licenses. Caparica. Yeah, yeah. So in California he was a founder, co-founder of the project manager of the World Surfing Reserves. And Joe Macedo is also known for paddling the giant, giant waves of Praia do Norte, Nazaré, right? Yeah, wow. So I have here a lot of awards uh, of a, an amazing CV uh, that goes through Billabong SSL, Big Wave Awards since nine, 2009, biggest pedal uh, that came up So I'm not mentioning uh, everything. Uh, I will put this uh, after our talk in the, in the thing. Uh, the last ones, uh, 2015 winner of the uh, XXL Awards, Portugal biggest wave tow-in um, and the third place Nazaré Challenge, um, WSL big wave tour 2016 and the winner of um, Giants of Nazaré pedaling. Can I translate it like that? And yeah, 2019. That event. Yeah. So, João, um, just to understand my connection with João, um, we met by Leonor, that Nokas, that it's, uh, I think she's yeah. there. She's there um, on Nokes. the other side. Thank you. And, um, and uh, we start working in our physical part. I'm not a, a surfer. I went to the water with Leonor. Uh, one or two, once or twice with Joel, we went uh, also I think once that once, and um, but the the idea of what I do is to study a bit of uh, uh, the sport, the task, and from there with the talk 
uh, of these amazing athletes, uh, I can I can get to it. And I think we we got some some interesting results. Uh, what we did, and we have some projects for the future that we will talk in the end. Okay. João, I would like to know from you, because you are the star here, not me, I'm talking too much. Uh, who is uh, João Macedo? João Macedo, who is Massas? Can you tell us just uh, in a few words, who are you? I mean, I think, uh, you know, that's it. Uh, I, it's a surfer above, above all, right? That's what really, I think, uh, drives me the most. And... Um, And, um, you know, with my son, I, I've really been happy to be a family man and uh, surround myself by friends who also think in that way. And, um, and in some way, being a triathlist, I think, is all surfers are. And, and I just uh, try my best to be on that side of things. And uh, by coaching, and this is something that I, I say to all coaches that or come through Surf Academia or that go through um the the coaching uh, certifications that I'm I'm one of the the coaches for that uh and it's just uh we we have this amazing opportunity to have a an impact on people through coaching in the ocean that is to make them way more aware of nature and i think that in itself uh even if you're not as involved in um you know sometimes in in the front lines of uh, environmental activism that for me was always something that really fed my, um, you know, my spirit, knowing that each person that I coached or each person that went through the surf school or each person that had, you know, a, a great experience in the ocean was someone that became more respectful of nature, someone that could, you know, understand a little bit more what I was going through, what a lot of other, you know, professional surfers go through, you know, be it events, be it this or the other, but it's more about this really simple uh, connection that we can make with nature and how that moves us and changes us and makes us, you know, in an ideal situation, better people. Obviously, it's not uh, a straight line and, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's better moments and worse moments and, uh, you know, competitive surfing itself, you know, you don't think, ah, everyone's sharing waves and, uh, You know, we have a thing in Nazare, everyone's like, yeah, hearts and all, but it's intense, you know? And so um, this was a heads up to some friends who were competing and they were always joking with that because we're always, you know, but when it all comes down to it, it's if you're having fun, I think you really reach your best performances. But there's pressures from sponsors, there's pressures from, you know, big events and all of that. And so it's difficult to keep your, you know, yourself aligned with all that and, um, You know, the, the, the training aspect, I think, is one that, and I think that's one of the things that I've always felt really attracted to, you know, the training that I, that I do with you and, and uh, you know, and the program that you've developed is that there's a fun component to it. You know, it's hard work when we're in the gym, but there's always, you know, this creativity and, and the work, you know, it, so it was always something that made me feel comfortable you know and and, and uh, surfing is a very creative activity itself so just this constant quest that um, you know and finding exercises but at the same time getting stronger so that you can compete better uh, is it, it's a difficult balance because if it um, yeah if you it's easy to kind of um, maybe not overtrain physically but mentally I think we we are going to to go through this uh, with the With the questions I or with the points that I I, I I made here, so we can go through it and you can explain because I think uh, one of the things to who is on the other side is is about this who who is this guy who is this uh, uh, I share lots of uh, big waves these last days. Uh, <laughs> everyone was amazing, but I just want to I don't want to forget one thing because even in messages that uh, people that are coming in are writing. It's, uh, yeah, uh, as we uh, heard in this podcast that you shared the last week and also I, I shared this week, you are a legend. And, uh, but at the same time, you are a very humble guy. Uh, you inspired a lot of people. I think you inspired everyone that goes uh, next to you and that, that connect. When people connect to you, you start to inspiring them. And uh, in the middle of this, you could be uh, 
and you are so humble in everything and uh, we just heard your your how you define yourself like that and i didn't want to to forget this joel my first Thank challenge you. is this one so i heard in this movie that i if uh, who is on the other side didn't listen or didn't watch it i they should it's this uh, way of life okay. yeah yeah the movie it's amazing it's uh, an inspiration it's it's brutal it's brutal and uh, uh i will share it again and uh, joan it's in the website i think it's in the weather website uh the where you can put uh, when you can see all your movies um yeah. right Vimeo channel i think has it yes and, uh, yes uh on my instagram account too okay so this is what i heard uh it's not about the money It's not about fame. It's something beyond. Perhaps not accountable for the majority of us human human beings. So, um, can you? Because you are on the other side, <laughs> okay? But we are the other uh, human beings, and for anyone that can watch. Uh, what I posted the last days with these uh, huge, huge waves that uh, I have here in front of me in a study of 2016. Uh, I don't know if you know this number, but um, the weight of a wave indicates a wipeout <laughs> is the equivalent of 410 tons of water that is dropped onto a surfer's body, which can result in severe injury and potentially death. No wonder. I'm still here to tell the <laughs> Yeah, My body is pretty wrecked. But let me just uh, add here uh, something that you said, and then I would like to, with this, what I said, because uh, the, 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 mo the, the movie is called It's a Way of Life. But mm -hmm. who is narrating the, the movie said that you said, you told him that mm -hmm. it's a way of feeling alive. Yeah. <laughs> Can you, uh, uh, between what I said before, um, because you are challenging your life uh, every time you go there, and it's not only the competitions, but it's all the trainings also, mm. and this uh, way of uh, feeling yeah. alive the interesting way of of um of understanding what we do and and i think you know surfers i think we're really lucky in the way that we're kind of um in a certain way people are interested in what we do and i and i think that's kind of a blessing because i think and that was one of the concepts of way of life is that this is kind of like a a, a gateway into people who who put in an effort and i think that's always results in extraordinary acts we're lucky because we have the ocean you know i've surfed all my life and it's just something that i just kept developing and and you know through the failures and injuries and all that but i i just kept at it but you know that's the thing that i think attracts all human activities and i and i i I, I kind of think about, you know, how lucky, you know, specifically that Nazare, you know, world-class wave is here in Portugal, you know, in terms of my career, it was really awesome that I have this stage that I can show all that I've been training. I don't have to be constantly traveling, which I, it, would, it would be complicated yeah. financially with family, you know, so suddenly there's th these things that kind of align and allow you to express yourself. And, and that, that expression is, you know, there's feedback from people, but sometimes there's a lot of really amazing uh, acts of expression, of human expression that go unaware. And, and there's, you know, so many sessions, you know, obviously that we do and huge waves and it's not being registered and, and you're there and you're doing that. And, and that feels, you know, really pure. And, 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 and it's, uh, I think it also is something that really fuels us. So, and makes us feel alive. So, The, the, I think the component of way of life that uh, that Nuno, you know, Blaze Hunter, the director, really uh, narrowed in on was that when we risk or, or when we uh, embrace risk, then we're able to appreciate and be more grateful for living. So if you're pushing yourself and you're on a certain edge, that 
no, no big wave surfer, you know, none of, you know, be it my friends, be it guys, you know, who are up and coming. I mean, none of them I feel are, you know, don't, they don't have a, no one has a death wish, you know, like, uh, I think same thing, you know, Formula One drivers, you know, motorcycle drivers, Let no me one just... has a death wish, but you, you want to uh, live life to the fullest. But Let me just time, interrupt you just to, to ask you something, because uh, I think everyone looks at it as a, a big risk. I would like to know, or you, if you can share, because this is a, uh, it's a risk, of course. Um, they call it uh, open skill sports, uh, who study this. Uh, but at the same time, I think uh, you and your team and your friends, you all control the variables that you can control before you get there. It's not just something, ah, I'm just going to surf and no. I'm going there, right? No, not at all. No, not at all. And it's a very kind of uh, gradual process to, you know, even to surf Giant Nazare or, you know, even with how... Um, Can you explain how, how, big, how big is Nazare? Because there are some people from the other side, on the other side that uh, maybe don't know how big Nazare can be. I mean, Nazare, it's, it's where the world... In the, like in, yeah, it's, it's like in stores of a building. It's what... Yeah, it, yeah, that's, a, that's the normal way of visualizing it. Yeah, five-story buildings. Yeah, moving, yeah. crashing, all those weights, you know. And so, um, I mean, it's just a complete overload if you don't gradually, you know, um, acclimate yourself to that. And, and so... Um, you know, the training aspect, I mean, the effort that you put in, um, one of our friends started developing and it actually became a very renowned program, uh, these days, a uh, wave crusher system, um, you know, and he developed a lot of underwater training and that gave us an edge, um, in terms of just kind of understanding a little bit more about how to function, uh, when you're not breathing and how you still have. Uh, a lot of reserves in your body um, when when you're you know under strain. So the, the, there was just um, the technology developed a lot over the last years. So you know with the inflation vests, with just the wetsuits that have uh, extra buoyancy. So there's a lot of stuff that has uh, evolved, and the jet ski itself is, is a tool for um, even in in a paddling situation. Uh, the connection with with the jet ski and you're driving to save up you know to um if a friend of yours is paddling or or if you're paddling to have that jet ski rescue uh just so it minimizes you know uh your risks and so that's what it comes down to so it, it's like you know you wouldn't think a guy who's you know riding a motorbike in in kind of a more uh limit uh, or pushing those limits and not wear a helmet or not have, you know, the suit. So it's all these things that, um, you know, you're just working on so that it's, it's not something that you just show up and, and just go for it. Um, obviously, there is that moment, <clears throat> a very interesting moment. I, I always feel psychologically because no matter how much you prepare, then there's always that moment that it's, it's just, it goes live, you know, it's like, you know, it just, it's on right now. So what are you going to do? And that's, that's exciting. And that's one of the sides of big wave surfing that, you know, I, I feel really passionate about. And then it just makes you uh, feel alive. You know, we go back to that. Just uh, before I, I enter this uh, more, more formal points, I, I, uh, I just would like to, to, to ask you because it's one of the questions, uh, that I have here is um, it's about fear, naturally, okay, mm -hmm. and uh, at the same time, uh, when we today I was uh, listening to, a, to also to a call about goals and about um, and the why why you do this is always fundamental when this moment that you, you were talking comes up, um, just to touch the the first part which is the 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 topic of this uh, which i really like it's called or i call it do you negotiate with your brain because your brain always going for the for the easiest thing it was going to protect you in a kind of way 
and we are always changing because if you are listening to your brain for sure you are not going to in a five store building um uh, yeah, yeah. wave right so yeah yeah can you just uh, because i think everyone on the other side and who is not going inside okay. um it's uh, it's one of the the main questions here and the main curiosities i would say and uh, i would add something it's amazing to have a five building store on one side and it's also funny then to have uh, uh, in nazare where the fortress is on the other side so you are just surfing in the middle of two buildings uh, huge buildings right it's crazy yeah i mean it's <laughs> it's a really radical place yeah i mean it's a very it's a very intense place and you know it's a conscious thing it's... for you 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 think it before i read some some testimonials of people who say when i'm there i just look at the the first the, the, the meter in front of me and i i just go with the flow so you get it when you get into the flow it's one thing but before you get into the flow yeah i, I think that's what's um you know uh fascinating really because you're in and out of flow right so i mean yeah. when you're going down a wave you're going so fast i mean it's 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 normally absolute focus and sometimes um it's little things that might take you out of focus that then can precipitate a fall or or something can happen in that way but um a lot of the times it's it's the in between times you know it really is one of those things that uh when you're waiting for a wave you know when you're waiting for the right one if you're still stay strong you know, you know uh mentally you know like you said like your brain starts saying oh you're so tired oh you know like you got hurt or you know it's getting cold or you know, whatever it is that obviously the the conditions are pushing you towards or, or the conditions aren't that good or you know and so it it just really becomes uh something that you have to enjoy it you know and so that's why i always go back to that and i and i think that's something that has to be you know really sacred because it's just so off uh into something that you really have to find uh, a deeper reason why you're you're subjecting yourself and your body to to that and and then um and then you can build from there you know like uh, i always am kind of curious about wildlife it calms me down you know it might sound a little bit uh cheesy or something but you know when you see seagulls and it's giant and they're there too you know and they're kind of really close to the waves and i don't know if they're having fun or what what it, what it is but it's just something that at the same time they're right there sharing it with you and and uh it's 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 fascinating you know like when you're there like and you're seeing you know nazar especially you're seeing waves exploding so the sounds are really intense <clears throat> just trying to stay calm so that then you can make the right decisions and and you know um, there are some things in life that I don't like to rationalize them and maybe I'm doing this a bit to you now at the moment because and it's but it's on the other side it's what's interesting for us uh, on this side that we are not there and I think it's even more interesting is what to take out of this to your life how you live Someone your life thank you can see the dolphins <laughs> they don't but, surf there they don't surf nazare that's interesting actually they they don't mm -hmm. they don't go there but uh, they, what what i was thinking is that it's it's all about everything what you do um decision making okay you need to take a decision when you go to the wave or not right because if you make the wrong decision it's uh, 410 tons that you yeah. can okay so you, mm -hmm. this is uh, um there are so many things there's so many interesting aspects um i'm running away from my <laughs> script but i i would ask you a question that i'm i'm challenging some athletes to to answer uh so is talent overrated in another word in in, a, in some other words no is there no, talent I... or it's it's hard work you need to be there you need to go you need to 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 spend hours and hours and hours because this doesn't come this decision that you take uh you need to do it like that it's not because you are talented and you born like that 
What's your opinion? Yeah, I think it's, a, you know, there, there's definitely a combination. When you have talent, you fall a little less, you know, you're not. Uh, but then again, I mean, normally, if you're talented, you're pushing the limits of what's possible. So you enjoy that performance side of things. And, and so you're, if you have that, uh, you know, I remember one thing that we were really and was really, uh, you know, amazing to be part of that in Nazare when we were paddling it big. It was trying to take off uh, as steep as possible. And that was just something that um, I was just, again, kind of lucky that my upbringing at my home beach in Praia Grande, we have really steep waves. And so I, I only started understanding this later, but the way that I was able to look at a wave and still feel that it was possible to take off on it, so to paddle and catch it, was slightly different than the great majority of surfers. So I was able to you know, really push myself in, in, into really steep sections of, of a wave and, and be making it. And that was something that was, it was, you know, one of those contributions to, to performance. And, you know, it's just, it's these small steps that we're all... But you know, do you think that it's, it's because of the hours that you spend at the yeah. sea, near the sea, looking at the sea, or it's something, because I believe that. I believe, and the no. studies that are made about Thailand and the ones that the workers, the ones who, who are there and do all the, the work and they have men. The, so the ones who people call more talent, coincidentally are the ones who work more, who have more hours of practice. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And this is the thing. So, João, I, I found something called um, by some, some big wave riders, uh, the 10 mandaments that um, they are interesting just because Uh, it's a nice way of uh, um, putting to the other side to people like me that don't know what you are doing on the big waves, uh, uh, how you behave and how you think about it. Okay. So the, the thing is that I'm, I'm going through them and you're just uh, commenting what's, what's your opinion and if you are if you're agreeing or not and if it's like that. Okay. So... Um, Part of the, pro the process uh, involves realizing and accepting how much is at stake when you are traveling down the face of a giant wave at uh, 50 miles per hour or 80 kilometers with a massive wall of water changing you at full throttle. This is the definition. Okay? So, João, first one. Never take off on the first wave of a big set. Okay? <laughs> Yeah. It's hard to resist a good-looking wave when you are waiting for 10 minutes and adrenaline wants to pump your whole body. The problem is that if you wipe out, you will take the entire set on the head. <laughs> What do you think about it? I mean, that is... It, it, it comes back to that, um, you know, when, when, um, when you... It, it, it comes to how you, you manage your risk, you know? So sometimes not all sets have more than one wave. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. You need to explain uh, to everyone what's uh, a wipeout. A wipeout is when you fall. Okay. <laughs> Basically, so wipeout is you catch the wave, but it doesn't let you ride it successfully. So, I mean, there's a million kind of wipeouts. And you get prizes Pop. for that. You got <laughs> yeah, no, <surfing laughs> the best wipeout. Surfing is unique. I mean, imagine... <laughs> In cars, if you had a prize for a, a giant car accident, I mean, it, it makes the highlight reels, right? When But it's it's because how you um, manage it, or it's how spectacular it was. I think it's the attempt. You know, I, I mean, we go back okay, and forth, okay. but it's it, it's all about honoring the attempt, honoring okay. something that looks impossible. But if you're trying it, okay, then maybe okay. the after you is the guy who's going to make it. You know, and so that's always really cool you know sometimes you don't really think you have an impact and then someone got really inspired by you trying so hard on one wave and then they took that and they took it a little bit further and then they actually made it and then and then it becomes something you know so so i think it's it's kind of cool that surfing does that in a way i guess yeah i mean for the surfer it's it's a really mixed feeling because you feel lost i didn't make it you know and but that's it i mean No, but the explanation makes sense. Makes sense. Because I was looking at it and the, what is this? What is this? 
João, uh, second, let the white water control the movement of your body. If you get caught by the wave or if you wipe out, don't, resi don't resist the power of the whitewash. You will lose energy and oxygen. Let yourself go in a fetal position. Fetal position. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you got to be like spaghetti. You got to be like spaghetti. So what that means is your body has to be super loose. That's why I think a lot of like, um, you know, limber uh, surfers are, are successful in big ways because, you know, they, they are able to survive to, you know, to bend and not break. And, and so I, I believe, and also when you're holding your breath, you want to be as relaxed as possible, even with all these tons of water shaking you and pressuring you and, and you know, throwing you in big distances and flipping and all that. So it's, it's really difficult to stay calm. You know, that's a lot of the training and practice is, is about staying calm. Um, and so it, it's... Um, it ends up becoming a skill, a very, very important skill uh, to not uh, get completely stressed out in the whitewater, you know? So That's to be limber, I, I don't really do like fetal position. I think everyone kind of has. I try to protect my head, but I don't crouch because the, the ocean is trying to like open you a little bit. So sometimes I just go with that. And, and if I spread out a little bit, then, then so be it. But so sometimes it's your, your joints, you know, there's a lot of guys have, uh, knee injuries, you know, shoulders, because you, it's kind of an explosion underwater. Okay. Um, I think the question on the, for us, uh, what's, what's the mindset? And let me just add this. Uh, you work a lot, these things, okay, right? This uh, underwater working, the uh, work is training. It's uh, one of the part, the big part of your, also of your training, so it's not, again, it's not something that happens and you just survive. No. Yeah. But no. what's the mindset when you are there? What's the mindset when you are in the washing machine? I mean, it's really strange. And, and I, I actually thought it was really natural to say this, but then I think I said it to, um, just to, uh, uh, we were just talking about this. So, you know, and, and what do you do? And, and uh, a friend of a friend was there and, it literally is you're kind of meditating, you know? So, I mean, it's so strange that in such a violent scenario, you know, underwater and the explosion, but you have to kind of get into that state so that you're actually relaxed. And so, strangely enough, that's uh, a survival tool so that you have to really, really relax and you have to get into a similar state that you do when, when you're meditating so that you're aware, so you're not sleeping, so you're aware of an opportunity to come up quicker. Uh, you have to be aware if you need to like uh, uh, deploy the inflation vest. So, I mean, you, you, you have to be sharp at the same time, but you're, you're definitely not uh, hyper-conscious because if you are, you're normally gonna, you're, you're gonna enter panic. You're gonna be like in a panic mode. I think you are and you, you are uh, at the same time, you also need to because I remember I was, I was having some lessons to, to kite surf and I was in, uh, in Ginshu just on the, <laughs> the sand and the, 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 the wind just pulled me and the, the guy just said, why didn't you pull the, the safety thing? Hey, on that moment, I'm just uh, going around. Do I remember that I need to pull it? So... Uh, uh, yeah. just, just to say that you, of course you are conscious and you are trained for that and again it's something to add that this is not something that you just go and I'm just fighting the sea it's not, it's a very controlled and trained uh, thing Okay. the other one that I have here it's a more safety thing, always wear a buoyant vest, I think I'm uh, it makes sense, you said that it's one of the evolutions that uh, the sports had and I think it makes all the sense, I believe uh, even the other day, uh, I was uh, commenting something about the skiers also, this back protects, uh, protecting that things and um, uh, almost an airbag that comes up when they, when they fall. Yeah. So yeah. everything Static. starts to, and, uh, so mm -hmm. it makes sense. Um, yeah, uh, the force, control, it's what we're talking, control panic. 
let fear do its job. Panic attacks are characterized by a fear of disaster or of losing control when you are there is no real danger. You don't want that. On the other side, fear, it's a basic survival mechanism. Fear is good and uh, should be driven to the big wave management. I think it makes sense. Yeah, big time. All right. Mm -hmm. So, no, and, uh, but you're saying you don't want to be so and it's difficult to manage that but you don't want to be so um just wanting to risk everything that then you don't uh you don't see uh you know that you can't you can make some mistakes and i think that's something that you need to do in a, in a way to push your limits but if you're only risking 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 then it's inevitable, no matter how talented you are, no matter how hard you work, all of that, that then it's going to catch up. And, and, and I think I, I, I became very aware of that. And, and uh, you know, and then you understand a little bit about yourself and you explore that a little bit. And so if you're already a bit risk, uh, you know, if you're a risk taker, then your work has to be to honor that fear and, and to not let it take over you but understand that you know you have to you know sometimes let a wave go by you know it just wasn't your wave and and it felt that and not you know punish yourself for not going or thinking or doubting yourself oh maybe if i didn't go am i losing you know my my courage am i losing you know my willingness to to go and to risk and so it's uh i think that's the really amazing thing is that big waves it really gives you uh this um constant challenge to to test your brain kind of what you were saying about what you know your mantra of the, of the negotiation and so it just i guess um if you're always in balance or if everything is calm then maybe you, it, you're not negotiating so it's actually it's actually cool to to put yourself in a position that your brain has to negotiate you know if that makes sense so i guess if if you're if you're always watching tv and eating chips right then there's not a big negotiation. Your brain won, right? I guess. Uh, I was going there and I, sh can I take out of this for us, for everyone, that to control fear, uh, I can um, prepare myself to it and I can control it better because um, all this stability and balance that you are talking in a way for me, uh, makes sense because you trained for it and I know what you do every day. I know uh, how you prepare everything. I was just saying that um, uh, it's like in normal life. Uh, and again, I come back to what I was saying. You need to be prepared because uh, I read once uh, an amazing book. Uh, I don't know if you read it from João Garcia, the guy who went to Everest. Yeah, And he knows that at a certain point without oxygen, he can't be so rational. So the decisions are made down and he needs to go and stick to the plan. Because if he doesn't stick to the plan, if he stays there longer, he knows that his decisions start to... So that's a kind of thing that I also believe here. Okay, you know that this adrenaline is going to bring you there. So you prepare for that. Yeah. Joel. Uh, we are already um, going um, long. I just want to to talk a bit about our, I think everyone is almost uh, there also, uh, about your projects, okay? Um, I think all this talk that we have, uh, we had, um, shows uh, what the sea, what the surf can bring to to everyone what C can, can, can um, the transfer that it can take, makes to, to, the, to the real life. And this is what I, I see uh, amazing in your, in your projects. So uh, I just would like that to give you um, a bit that you can talk a bit about your uh, projects in Surf Academy. Um, okay, the surf moments, the river surf adventure, uh, because there are people here um, from um, not only from Portugal, but from the outside. So um, can you share a bit of uh, what, what are these, these projects that yeah. you have? 
Uh, sure. Um, well, back when I was saying I, I requalified for the Big Wave World Tour, and uh, I actually initiated a, a crowdfunding campaign to to um, to get to the spots. And uh, some of my friends are here. Yes, yeah, Joanna. Uh, we organized an amazing Andre. I think was online too, and you know Chino and all my friends. We we did a giant party here at the beach. You know to kind of raise funds. And also, uh, one of the things that was born from that was kind of a retreat um, that I could go with and, and bring, you know, guys like Eric, uh, Glenn Owens, uh, another friend of mine, um, you know, and we could share uh, these experiences, you know, in, in a in a at a nice location and, and just make something that. Uh, people could be, you know, just have a, a memorable time in the ocean and, you know, and kind of, it, it's a little bit of a shortcut, you know, so we're really giving everything, but hopefully the people that do come kind of understand that and still, you know, respect the, the, the process. So we're not putting anyone in big waves right away or doing anything stupid like that, you know, sorry to use that word that way, but I, I think that's, that's what it is, you know, if, you can't, you, you have to, you, even if, you know, if you have resources, you have to kind of like still give yourself a little bit into the process. But so, uh, surf moments and uh, uh, a Hebrew surf experience, they're, they're just uh, small events that help fund my, my, um, my season. Um, and at the same time, it feels like a really great way to share what, what, what I do and, and, uh, and, and just, you know, Basically, you you have access to a really uh, fun experience and and kind of in a in a light way because surfing's fun and and so you know and brings and brings you all the things that we were talking here and that uh, that you take for your own life and that just one thing people can get in touch with you through the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can send a message to the website. Uh, you know, so can you say? Can you? Give, I don't have any dates for a new one, especially now. I mean, it's it's a really challenging time. So, but um, you know, and summer season's coming up, so most of our focus is just here at Praia Grande in Sintra. Um, but uh, which I invite, which I invite everyone because it's amazing that you go there and have this this uh, surf experience. But, okay. Um, thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, it's um, it's something that um, I'm really stoked about, and uh, every year people who have come before ask me about it, and so it's it's awesome. It's awesome what comes. It's together. amazing. Let me just one thing, which is our project that is on the table. Yeah. Which is uh, this uh, João Macedo Strength and Conditioning <laughs> Big Wave uh, Training Program that we are building and we are putting outside, so people can uh, everyone that likes. Uh, could um, can uh, enjoy and try a bit like uh, João Macedo. João, I think it's a okay. bit already we no. went uh, away, uh, but um, it's amazing. I just want to tell you that all the message that's come here, uh, it's about how inspiring you are, uh, how the legend you are. Hey, you are an amazing character. Everyone knows, everyone puts it on the table. It's amazing, and at the same time, you are so humble, and you are so reachable. Anyone can come to you and have a talk, which sometimes in Portugal, unfortunately, I don't see this so much. Uh, when, when you get in a certain level, uh, people uh, are not so, um, so humble anymore, unfortunately. And uh, I think it's, um, you, are, you are this guy. Okay, Obrigado. João, obrigado. Uh, it was amazing. And um, yeah, Get thank you, everyone. About surfing through these times, everyone stay safe. Uh, yeah, make keep safe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, uh, we'll be back in the water soon. This okay, thank thank you. Obrigado, João. Tchau, tchau. Obrigado a todos. Foi espetacular.